I was very uh, I was very taken up by landscape uh, on my journeys. It wasn't something that used to interest me very much before I went on the first journey. Um, I, I had traveled in France and uh, Europe is, is a small scale continent and, uh, and I was very young and impatient and didn't really see the, the landscape too clearly. I was more interested in other things. Um, and um, really the, the first journey was the first time that I found myself in very large areas of, of uninterrupted landscape and uh, and it's um, it, it gradually got a hold of me and one of the things one of the things that got that I realized is that when I travel through empty countryside I'm always thinking what would I do here <clears throat> I'm very I'm, I'm a very um, intrusive sort of person I'm always wanting to get involved there, there are there are people who like to travel through deserts who just love the idea of being in a desert and they don't want anything ever to touch it and so on. I'm not, I'm not very fond of deserts. I like the sort of country where you can grow things, where, where people can live. <coughs> and, uh, and as the journey went on and I went through Africa and then eventually through the Andes and so on, that became really the most important thing was um, what would I do? Um, uh, how would I live? How, how do these people live? The, um, the Andes were particularly interesting because for the first time I was in, in a place where uh, poor people, indigenous people, live in mountains. They live in a mountainous area and, and 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 their way of, of living in it was was very interesting and that had had a strange effect on me when I got to America where there are these very large open landscapes and, and national parks but nobody lives in them and and everybody wanted me to say how beautiful they were and how extraordinary and for me what was missing was that there, there were no people in, it, in them um, and my problem about uh, living and doing things in, the la in landscapes became particularly acute in Australia <coughs> because um, I've, I rode through a, a part of Australia which was called the Nullarbor that was um, hundreds and hundreds of miles, a thousand miles I think, of uninterrupted dirt through one of the driest places in the world um, and yet the, 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 you knew that beyond the horizon to the south was the whole Pacific Ocean you know? so it was really hard for me to try to think well how, how would you how would you turn any of this into a habitable place and it was particularly um, it struck me particularly because halfway through there was this one man who had a, a petrol station and a little tin hut called Mr. Gurney and uh, and he owned an enormous amount of this of this land hundreds and hundreds of square miles uh, you know, 250 square miles or something of this and it was all it was all useless except for this little place where he lived because there was a hole in the ground and there was a spring at the bottom so so, so although this is a very beautiful backdrop here, and it is, it, it is very lovely, and I understand people from Madrid like to come out here and fall off it um, and hurt themselves every now and again, but um, it, it's not really my favorite kind of countryside. I, 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 people are always showing me beautiful rocks and beautiful deserts, and I, I pretend to think to say that it's lovely, but so I like um, I like places where grass grows and where fishes swim and and birds fly and uh, where the grass where the ground grows stuff. Mm -hmm.